In this lesson, we're just revisiting exponent laws and algebra that you've seen in spirals 1 and 2. So for the first example, we're just going to simplify these expressions. 36x squared y to the exponent 6 divided by negative 4x squared y cubed. We're dividing, so we need to use our rules for dividing powers with the same base. Okay, so we'll just go piece by piece. 36 divided by negative 4. Well, that's negative 9. x squared divided by x squared. You're dividing powers with the same base, so you subtract the exponents, 2 minus 2. That's 0. y to the 6 divided by y to the 3. Well, again, we're dividing powers with the same base. They both have y as the base, so we subtract the exponents. 6 minus 3. That's 3. So we end up with negative 9 x to the 0 y to the 3. Now, x to the 0 is just 1, so we can just not put it in there. We're multiplying by 1. It doesn't change anything. So really, our answer is negative 9 y to the exponent 3. Question B, 3c to the exponent 3, d to the exponent 2, times 24c to the exponent 2, d to the exponent 7, all of that divided by 2cd squared in the brackets, and that whole thing to the exponent 3. So this looks very complicated, but if you just break it down step by step, it's not so bad. So let's just look at the numerator first. We've got 3 times 24. That's 72. c to the exponent 3 times c to the exponent 2. We're multiplying powers with the same base, so we add the exponents. 3 plus 2 is 5. So we have c to the exponent 5. Then we have d to the exponent 2 times d to the exponent 7. Again, multiplying powers with the same base, so we add the exponents. 2 plus 7 is 9. So we have d to the exponent 9. So we have 72 c to the 5 d to the 9 on the numerator. Now let's look at the denominator. We have this whole thing in brackets to the exponent 3. So that just means this exponent 3 applies to each part of the term in the brackets. So we have 2 to the exponent 3. Well, that's 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. We have c to the exponent 3. Well, that's c to the exponent 3. That's easy. Then we have d squared to the exponent 3. Well, this is a power of a power. So it's d squared times itself three times. That's d squared times d squared times d squared. So you can add 2 plus 2 plus 2. That's 6. Or you can remember the rule power of a power. You multiply the exponents. 2 times 3. That's 6. So either way you look at it, we have 8 c to the exponent 3, d to the exponent 6 in the denominator. Now we can work with the numerator and the denominator. We're going to divide. So 72 divided by 8, that's 9. c to the 5 divided by c to the 3. We're dividing powers with the same base, so we subtract the exponents. 5 minus 3 is 2 d to the 9 divided by d to the 6. Again, subtract the exponents. 9 minus 6 is 3. So we end up with 9, c to the exponent 2, d to the exponent 3. Now a lot of people, when they, when they see the question, it says simplify. They think somehow you're supposed to get a value for your variable. Like in this one, they think somehow I need to figure out what y is. But you can't. There's nothing you can do to this. It's not equal to some value. You can't solve for y. So simplify just means take this expression and make it simpler. So instead of having this whole thing divided by this whole thing, we're, we're, we knock it down to one term. Same with here. We started with this complicated expression. Now it's simplified. We're not solving for anything. So I want you to
pay attention to the words. If it says simplify, you're not getting a value for your variable. You're just making the expression simpler. Example two, consider the expression negative 8x squared y cubed times 2x to the exponent 8y to the exponent 3 divided by 2x squared y to the exponent 3. Now there's two key words here, substitute and evaluate. Substitute, x equals negative 2 and y equals negative 1. When we substitute, we take these values for x and y, and we replace x and y everywhere we see them in the expression with those values. So this gets substituted for this, and this, and this. Negative 1 gets substituted here, here, and here. Once we've done that, now we have an expression where all the values are known. Now we can evaluate. Evaluate means get the value. Figure out the value of the expression. Basically, just do the math, following the order of operations, bed mass. So I'll start with my expression. I will substitute x to be minus 2 and y to be minus 1. And now I have to follow bed mass. So brackets first. Now all the exponents. Now division and multiplication in the order that they appear. And once I do that, I end up with my answer. Now let's look at the same expression. But this time, before we start substituting values in, let's use our exponent laws to simplify the expression first. So going to do like we did in the first example. We're going to go step by step. Negative 8 times 2, that's negative 16. x squared times x to the exponent 8. We're multiplying powers with the same base, so we add the exponents. 2 plus 8 is 10. y to the exponent 3 times y to the exponent 3. Add the exponents. That's y to the exponent 6. In the denominator, we have in the brackets with an exponent of 3. So 2 to the exponent 3 is 8. x squared to the exponent 3 is x to the exponent 6. y to the exponent 3 is y to the exponent 3. And now negative 16 divided by 8, that's negative 2. x to the 10 divided by x to the 6. We're dividing powers at the same base. We subtract the exponents. 10 minus 6 is 4. y to the 6 divided by y to the 3. Well, 6 minus 3 is 3. So this is our simplified expression. So now we're going to substitute our values of negative 2 for x and minus 1 for y into our simplified expression. And we're going to evaluate this simplified expression. So we're going to do what we did before. We're going to substitute our values in for x and y. We'll do the exponents. And then we'll do the multiplication. And look at that. We get the same answer as we did before. So it doesn't matter if you substitute and then evaluate. Or if you simplify first, then substitute and then evaluate. You get the same value.